We'll come in once or twice a week. We'll yeah. bring um, just like high density fiber or food, so bread and beans. Do you eat meat? No, I don't eat meat. Let me know later. All right, see you guys. This place is awesome. Welcome to the Iron Snail. Hey class, welcome to the Iron Snail, the channel where I document me starting the most successful YouTube clothing brand in history. Today, we have a major development in infrastructure, a super special delivery, nut sacks, and I'm giving away all of my clothes. Now, let's rage. We're going to deal with that later. Hello. There's a big development in the world of the Iron Snail and also Chris and Meg's life that it, we're going to, we have the beef. Sit anywhere you'd like. All right. Chris, I don't want to mess up your leather seats. Chris has leather seats. They are taking me to it now. Chris just forgot something in the car, so he has to go grab that. But Meg is going to do the big reveal for me. Which one is it? This one or this one? This is a massive development in the world of the snail. I wish, uh, I just want to thank everybody for <laughs> So essentially, this is Chris and Meg's spot for now, but when I have more stuff for the snail, like bolts of wool and all that stuff, I'm gonna split it with them, and then I'll be able to store it in here. Which is very cool, you have a beautiful view of steel and concrete. The only thing I'm concerned about is that the iron snail is gonna grow so much, Chris and Meg will have no more room. Uh oh. Sorry. They clearly are not worried about that. Gary. If there's not a line at the coffee shop, mm. one please. <laughs> so much. I know. I had a great time with your dad. Thank you. My dad? Yeah. And it was kind of nice. Thank Bye, you. Meg. Bye, Mikey. Driver? Yes, sir. You take me to the Ritz Carlton. Great. How do you spell it? Same way as my last name. Kristen? <laughs> <laughs> This video is sponsored by The Morning Dram. It's not that early in the morning, but it's early, just early enough where I can make a cup of coffee, go for a walk before I start my day, and not feel bad. And I'm going to have Chris, my neighbor, taste test it because he's a coffee expert and I'm not. Wow, coffee reminds me of my mom. It's bourbon barrel aged coffee. Like I said, the sponsor of this video is Morning Dram. A dram is a small shot of alcohol. Although there is no alcohol in this coffee, Chris and Meg are notoriously very honest with their feedback about everything. I think we're there. I think start putting, it's really hot, it's really hot. Well, why are you holding it that way? There's no way for me to pick it up without- <laughs> It is coffee aged in whiskey barrels to give notes of whiskey. Yeah, it does smell like that. Mmm. Mm. It's mellow. I think it's just a shitty pour over. <laughs> See, that is exactly how I said Chris would react, but then he's really just making fun of my pour over skills, then he did a real taste test. This is delicious. What's it called? Morning Dram. All in all, good feedback and cool hardware, so thank you Morning Dram for sponsoring this video. No spoilers, but in The Last of Us, there's a scene where there's this like gaping hole in the ground and like things are sinking into it and like there's growling from it and this guy and this woman look at it and they're like, mm, we'll deal with that later. And then they leave. That's kind of been me with this for the past like two-ish weeks, but I'll explain why. There are two things going on at play here. One of them is I have a job side hustle kind of called the Iron Snail where I review a ton of clothes and I've been trying to figure out a way to store them all, which I have been doing with this, this Ivar system from Ikea. These are boxes for the Prologue jacket. Even when you think you're safe and you go under my bed, it's full of boxes under here too. And then you realize that everything in my apartment is basically taken over by the snail, which is fine because because I live alone, but Taylor's moving back from Denmark in August, and we aren't planning on living together. I'm salivating at the thought of it. I'm just eating cheese while I talk to Taylor. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. 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 Oh. Anything else you want to say? No, I ran out of toys to show you guys. Ah, oh, boo. We're definitely planning on Taylor living here, but not really living here. This apartment is a bit of a conundrum because in New York, in where I am in Brooklyn, it's a pretty good deal, but it's rent stabilized. So the rent can only go up a certain amount per year, which means it gets to be a better and better deal the longer that you stay here. I pay a certain amount, but the people upstairs have like a two bedroom apartment and they pay like $600 a month. 
And they're like 95 and they got this apartment like in the 1800s, so it's a little different, but still, that makes it a very attractive offer, especially because Taylor and I are planning on being billionaires and traveling the world, so we won't even be here that much. The really interesting part, though, is that my friend Chris lives right next door, my friend Marcus lives right upstairs, and both of their apartments are, they just dwarf mine. It's difficult to fully picture Taylor and I both living here, especially if we're both working from home a lot because it's not that big. That's why I have this desk and my desk over there. But that leads into one of my big goals. The goal is really, by the time Taylor gets here, to make the apartment so efficient with space that it's like entertaining and fun to live in a space that's kind of small. For example, putting stools on the wall, having a table, whatever these things are that I can hang things on. Bunch of stuff like that. But I really, it's like out of one right now, like it's not that efficient. I want to get it to like a 20 by the time Taylor gets here. And in order to do that, I have to start by getting rid of giant piles of clothes that I don't ever wear. Today, I'm having a yard sale. Only my friends are invited. I wish I could invite all of you. Chris and Meg are coming. I think Marcus is coming and Chance is coming. Anyways, I have to organize for the yard sale and I figured I'd set the mood with this candle. These are the Shorewood Chelsea boots from Milwaukee Boot Company. Leather lined, Goodyear welted. The leather patinas like crazy. And the toe, my Blundstones kind of point down and they're flat. The toe on these points up. So they're a little bit more cowboy feeling-y, which is cool because I always wanted to try some form of cowboy boots, but I was nervous to go like full bore with it. Anyways, Milwaukee Boot Company sent me these for free. So thank you, Robert. That was very nice of you. Feel free to check them out. Link is in the bio. I forgot to mention why I'm even talking about corrosion nut buttons. These will be the buttons on the mammoth wool jacket that we are working on. Okay, so chances are that you have heard of corrosion nut buttons. I don't know if you have something with them on them, but DHEN 1920 uses them. And I think a lot of companies door was locked. Didn't think it would be locked. And fascinatingly, Corozo nut buttons actually used to be a very, very popular button in the US, and it accounted for like 20% of all the buttons in the world. And then plastic came and everybody was like, that's way better, way cheaper. But really, it was just way cheaper. So this is a nut button. The vignetting on that filter is crazy. Okay, Corozo nut buttons. Both of these are Corozo nut buttons. Neither of these are gonna go on the mammoth jacket. Slightly different ones will. This color, this matte level, which is completely matte because as you use it more, it will polish up. Maybe not to like a perfect high shine, but certain aspects of it will get more and more polished, which I think is cool. They're very, very tough buttons. They're very scratch resistant. They have a high burn temperature. I don't know why you'd be burning your buttons, but it's incredibly tight woven plant fiber. It's cellulose and how it works is there are these massive, giant, huge palm trees in South America called Tagua palm trees. And they have these giant nut sacks called mococha. Am I doing a good job explaining this? This whole process is very environmentally friendly if you compare it to something like almonds where you have to shake the F out of a tree, all the almonds fall to the ground, you collect the almonds, you do it, whatever. These Tagua palms drop their giant nut sacks on the ground and everybody loves them. Get the nut sacks, they open them, and if you don't let the nut sacks properly dry, there is a sweet and creamy liquid on the inside that tastes similar to chocolate. And what's cool is that the Tagua palm doesn't like being farmed, so basically all the Tugua palms are just wild. So you can essentially eat what's inside of them, or if you let them dry for four to eight weeks, you then have a very solid nut in the center, a Corozo nut, which are where Corozo nut buttons come from. I was hoping that the ones that I'm using would arrive in time. They did not, but they should be here next week. Also, this these probably will make no sense right now, but there is some hardware going on the mammoth jacket that I have to test out. So that's on its way too. A lot of stuff is on its way. That's why I have to make minimalism hip again. But there's no reason why I should be able to have this many clothes on the ground in my living room and not be naked myself. This isn't even my wardrobe. I could still go pick out sweaters and jeans and boots and stuff like that. I just have so much stuff. Yo. Oh, yo. What's up, Mikey? good, dude. How's it going? Good. Wow. Yeah. Also, did you just finish filming the, uh, the Black Album, whatever that Beatles one is? I was just talking to someone about how much I hate the Beatles. What? I don't hate the Beatles. I like the Beatles, I just love Bob Dylan. Chance is wearing the Tanuki Redcast Heritage collab jeans that I reviewed a while ago, but he was supposed to sell them for me, liked them so much that he just kept them. So that was, it was really awesome that he- Oh yeah. It looks good, right? It looks fantastic. I can't. 
just by feeling it, it feels very nice. And then when I left the farm, the chickens really started acting up like the rooster started attacking everybody. You gotta get the changing room ready. <laughs> Jesus Christ! We have Marcus! Marcus, this is Chance. Oh my god, look at all this. Worlds are colliding right now. We also have a complimentary mirror behind you. Waterproof. Oh, it's peak design. Uh oh. I was told there was a Michael that lives here. Uh oh. Yeah, we need to sure. do something about that. <laughs> hey! Look at this extravagance. This is here. Chris put stuff We're around his neck friends. like that to see if it fits. She got something. Marcus? Thanks, buddy. Bye, buddy. All the. Cooler, expensive stuff, I guess we'll list. Yeah, sounds great. Everything else I'm gonna donate, I guess. You really do look like a beetle <laughs> in that moment. With the <laughs> scarf and the jacket. In the area, so I, and it's on Franklin, so I, nice call. I would have kept walking for quite a while. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Michael. Just a regular Thursday today, March 9th. Just uh, getting home from an ordinary day at work, crossing the street pretty ordinarily like I usually do. Casually walk into my apartment like I normally do. The door is usually locked, but I prepped it for that take. And just going into my regular apartment with nothing different, Oh, Canada! The jackets are here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This is just one. Great news, everybody. The prolonged jackets have finally arrived. Sorry, there was quite a massive delay, but uh, they're here, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna ship these out super quick. Check this out. Tale of the Iron Snail. Pretty cool. But what you don't expect is that this is the prologue, so there's a story that goes with the snail in there, and you can just... You could tear this off and read the story of the Iron Snail. And I'm thinking you'll get one of those with every product. So there'll be the chapter one, this is the prologue, obviously there'll be the mammoth, which still has its own story, but wow, very exciting. I really hated that I had to rip one of these off. Either way though, whoa, how exciting. Hopefully you can see though why I'm trying to be more minimalistic because immediately my apartment is filling up with things again. If I died, I was thinking today as I was putting everything in the living room, like, can you imagine if I died? Like, people would have to go through that. Like, people that I love would have to look through all of these clothes. They'd have to look through like 50 pairs of boots and like 30 jackets and all this. And just like, they wouldn't recognize most of them. All of your possessions, I don't know where it takes up in your head, but they weigh on you like a little bit. Maybe, and maybe that's just for me. Maybe other people feel like if they don't have all that stuff, they're not living. It, you know, it goes either way. But anyways, thank you all for watching. This was one of the most wholesome days I've had in a while. I don't usually have like six people come over and hang out and chat with me. All right, anyways, I'll see you later. Goodbye.